Welcome back to Theater Appreciation. I'm your teacher, Professor Garcia, and today what we are going to go over is melodrama. How many of you have heard of melodrama? Has anyone here ever been told that they were being melodramatic? Most of us get offended and we're super upset and we have no idea what that even means. Well, we're going to go over what that means today. We're going to go over the history of melodrama itself. And finally, we're going to go over some stock character types that are from melodrama that you still see in every show that you watch today. So let's get started. Have you ever been told that you were being melodramatic? What does that mean? We get really offended when we hear it because we know it's insulting, but we're not sure why. Well, let's look at the word, melodrama. Now, melodrama is two words that are smashed together. Drama, drama is conflict. So if somebody's being a drama queen, you are saying you are the queen of conflict. And conflict is two opposing forces colliding. So a drama queen is somebody who can make drama or conflict out of any situation. And so we give them the title of drama queen. So if that's what drama means, what does the mellow mean? A lot of times people think that it means mellow like chill. Like it's just laid back chill drama. But was that what you were being accused of when you were told that you were being melodramatic? I don't think so, right? What mellow means, it comes from the word melody. And it means music drama. So any time that you have had conflict and there was music behind it, you were being melodramatic. And this happens quite a bit because we're so used to movies and TV shows and those are nothing but melodramas. But if I walk into a scary room and I open the door and you hear guys, guys, that's melodrama. When you are frolicking in a field and you see the love of your life and you're reaching out towards them, that's melodrama. When you lose somebody that you love and you go, no, 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 that's melodrama. Now, Melodrama is music with conflict. And anytime you combine those two things, you have melodrama. Secretly, we all wish we lived in a melodrama, even though that's not the world. But anytime you go through a breakup and you sit in your car, what kind of music do you listen to? You listen to sad music. You put it on. So all of your friends have to live in the same melodrama with you. Uh-uh, guys. Today, this is the playlist of our lives. But when you're, or if you're in sports and you're get, trying to get pumped up, what kind of music do you listen to? Anytime you go to the gym, when you put on your headphones, what are you thinking about? You're living in a little melodrama of yourself. You're going through a montage highlight reel of what you're going to be like once you're all fit. Exactly. We all want to live in a melodrama. If you've ever thought about asking somebody out and you've practiced that speech, I have loved you from the first moment that I saw you. That's melodrama. Now, the only difference is the person that if they really like you, they're going to be like, I hear the music too. But if they don't, then they're like, this person's weird and they're totally acting creepy. But melodrama is the key. That is the thing we are all used to. We all think we live in one. But just for a moment, I want you to think about how horrible it would be to live in one. Could you imagine if you were embarrassed or if you failed? Hey! <laughs> that music played every time you failed? Everybody would know! Could you imagine walking into a room and having a crush on somebody and as soon as you walked in the room you saw them? This played? You could have no secrets! Your secrets would be broadcast to everybody! Exactly! 
That would be a horrible existence. So, be grateful we don't live in a melodrama, but that doesn't mean that you can't indulge those fantasies and enjoy a good melodrama when you see them. Melodrama came about in France around the time of their revolution. It was Napoleon's favorite art form. I love it. It was thought of to be the theater of the people. I mean, it was primarily the hero was a working class person suffering, and throughout this moral journey, at the vi finally at the very end, the hero is rewarded for all of their virtues. In France and in Germany, you start to see melodramas come about, and it's we think it's because somewhere along the line, there was operas if you wanted singing and you wanted music, there was dance, and if you wanted to just watch a story be told through dance, and then there was a symphony if you wanted to hear just music, and then there was theater. All of these art forms were very different, and you would go and choose which one you wanted to see. Now, somewhere along the line, somebody realized that if a really good actor said this speech in a really dramatic way, some people cried. But if you played music behind it, everybody cried. Music does this amazing thing, especially in theater. It hypnotizes your audience, and it tells them information you want them to know. It manipulates them into the world of the character. Once melodrama gets instituted, it becomes the most dominant form of theater around the entire world. And once melodrama begins, it begins in France, in Germany, and makes its way to America. But once it gets to America, it definitely becomes American. In America, in the 1800s, more people went and saw theater at that time than ever before and since. Now, they didn't have movies at this time, and melodrama was the closest thing to our modern films that you're going to see in the theater. And melodrama, because of that, because it was so successful, they start up in the ante. So melodramas start getting bigger and bigger, and the spectacle of them gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you have volcanoes exploding on stage, you have natural disasters. They would have the entire theater, they would have it covered in a giant treadmill. They would bring horses on stage and get the horses running, and people behind the stage would be moving this treadmill as fast as they could, and they would have a full-out horse race they could have that on stage, and they did at this time. Because these elements got so big, you have the need for a director. So directors come about because of melodrama. You didn't really need a director at this point. Before this, you learned how to stage a good play just by being in a theater company and seeing what worked. But when you have all kinds of elements that need to be coordinated, then you need somebody sitting in the back of the audience who can help time everything out and they have that third eye then that becomes necessary so if you are a director you better think melodrama because that's why you have a job at this time there were some plays that were really 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 famous but none more so than uncle tom's cabin uncle tom's cabin is one of the most famous of all the plays um, or even stories in general at this time there were over 500 theater companies performing Uncle Tom's Cabin in America alone. This was a giant play and it helped start off the Civil War. And so it becomes a really, really, really powerful, pivotal piece of theater in American history. Once melodrama gets started, it becomes the dominant form of theater in the entire world. And it really hasn't let up since. Now, it's gone away in the world of theater, so you don't see as much melodrama in theater anymore, but film is nothing but melodrama, and it kind of took up the mantle. And if you're gonna compare how many people watch film or TV as opposed to theater, then they're not even equal. But let's talk about some of those character types, where they come from, and why the stories you love today play out the way they do. The Hero. The hero is the person that the audience is supposed to see as themselves. 
The hero has to have certain qualities in order for it to be an effective hero. Now, the world of melodrama is always a very clear-cut good versus evil world. And stories, especially in film, I want you to think about a television show. A television show has 22 minutes to tell you a story. They don't really have a, enough time to make a really deep, rich world full of all the shades of complexity that we require in our normal everyday lives. No, you don't care about that. You want to see a problem be introduced and then a problem solved. And we have 22 minutes to tell you that. So if that's the case, the world, of course, is going to be a good versus evil world. So your hero, your hero has to live within this world. The hero must have a certain set of qualities. First and foremost, the hero must have a good heart. That doesn't mean that they can't be damaged because this has evolved over time. So you can have an anti-hero now, but the hero of your story, a hero can be male, female, any gender that you wish, but the hero is your main heroic character. This character must have a good heart. That is how the audience relates to them. The audience has to see themselves in that character. If they don't, then it won't work. Your audience won't respond or relate to the story that you are telling. So first and foremost, the character, the hero, must have a good heart. Second, the hero is the chosen one. The hero is the one who is going to overcome the villain. If they don't, again, why are we watching this story? We need to be watching the story about the hero we are in the story. And if the story is meant to teach me something, and all melodramas are supposed to teach you a lesson, the lesson is how you should be living your life. So in the world of melodrama, the entire world is good, and e good versus evil, and it's going to teach you a moral lesson. And within that framework, your hero must have a good heart. They have to be the chosen one. And in the beginning, they need to know they're chosen, but not know why they're chosen, right? That is the most essential part of any story that is being told. Your hero must know that there is something special about them, but at the beginning of the story, they don't know why they are special. Because that's you. Every human being has looked out in the beginning of their life and not known why they were special, but they just deep down knew that they had something special to give. That's why you're watching this video. That's why you are going to school and learning something so you can develop the skills, figure out who you are, and overcome your villains. All right, the hero cannot overcome the villain alone though. So let's go to our next character type. The second character type, before we go into anyone who helps the hero, is the villain. The villain is the primary source of conflict. The villain is usually a person, but this does not have to be the case. The villain can be anything. It can be nature, it could be another human, it could be a society, it could be technology, it could be some supernatural thing. But what matters is that it is the primary source of conflict. The villain, whatever it is, is evil. Remember, we're living in a good versus evil world. Now the villain is powerful and the villain is evil. We don't need to know much more than that. In fact, the more you tell us about the villain, the more dangerous it becomes for you. Let's talk about Marvel and the X-Men. Marvel has this group of characters called the X-Men and the X-Men are good and they are always fighting for the human race. And then they created this villain, Magneto. And Magneto was this perfect villain that they had. And the problem that Marvel found for themselves is that they gave that character such a compelling backstory that once it was out, that this person had been in a concentration camp and all of his family was murdered. And because of that, he's going to destroy humans because they want to do all of the things that they had done to the Jewish people to mutants. 
Well, as soon as they came out with that backstory, more people started rooting for the villain than they did for the X-Men. So they had to have him start killing off boatloads of innocent people just to get the audience to hate him again because they gave him too compelling of a backstory. More of a backstory you give your villain the more relatable they are to your audience and the more you jeopardize the hero's struggle. So you don't need to know that much about the character. In fact, if we look at Harry Potter, do we know why Voldemort is evil? No, not really. He's just evil and the more we try to explore and go into it, the vaguer it becomes. Harry and Voldemort are essentially the same person. They had all of the similar backstory except one turned evil and one is good. We see ourselves as this one, and the villain is almost a representation a lot of times of what the hero could become if they don't live up to their true potential or if they turn to the dark side. So, with the villain, the villain is the character or entity that hates the hero and wants to possess the heroine. They want to possess the heroine. Now let's go into what the heroine is. The heroine. The heroine, this start goes back to the days where the woman was tied to the train track. I you to think of the old Dudley Do-Right um, cartoons, where Snidely Whiplash would tie the heroine to the train tracks, and Dudley Do-Right, the hero, would go and save her. Again, this is all, these are all melodramatic characteristics. But this has since evolved, and now the heroine is whatever needs to be saved. Now at this time, it was usually the woman, it didn't always have to be, but a lot of times it was, and that character type has just evolved. So when we use the term heroine, it's not, we're not talking about a person or a gender. What, I, what we're really talking about is whatever needs to be saved. So I would look at the story and think, what needs to be saved? In some films, it's a book, or in Lord of the Rings, it's a ring. Sometimes in superhero movies, it's the world. It could be anything. What is at stake here? What are the characters fighting for? What does the villain want to possess and control? And what is the hero trying to protect and save? Ask yourself, what needs to be saved? If this is Moana, then the hero is Moana, and the heroine is her entire island. She's trying to save her island. And now let's start talking about our fourth character type, the sidekick. The sidekick is the person who helps the hero overcome the villain. The hero cannot do this alone, so they need friends. They need people who can support them along the way. The sidekick cannot defeat the villain alone. If the villain and the sidekick ever fight, the sidekick loses or dies a really horrible, horrible death. But the hero will be in peril multiple times throughout the journey, and the sidekick is going to save the hero and aid the hero in their quest to overcome the villain. This can show up in all kinds of ways and always does, but that's the character's primary goal. And finally, the teacher or the mentor. The mentor is the teacher. The teacher is the person who helps the hero recognize and unlock their true potential, which they will then later use in the story to go and help defeat the villain. Now, this is not the person who gives them all the tools that they need. They just get them started on the journey. And again, all the best teachers in your life, that's what they do. You're not gonna learn everything you need to know from, from this class or any class. You're just gonna get started. What we're gonna do is introduce the topic to you. We're gonna help you unlock the things about you that you are going to change the world with. And that's what that character does. Now there's always a barrier that cannot be crossed by this character. So the mentor or teacher character is stuck in this situation. So if this character, sometimes this character dies. So if this is Harry Potter, Dumbledore has to die. He has to die because where does Harry, Hermione, and Ron go? Where do they go every time there's trouble? Well, they run to Dumbledore. There has to be a time though where the mentor is gone and there's no one to hide behind. Because if Dumbledore is the chosen one, the book series should have been called Dumbledore, right? The movies should be called Dumbledore, but they're not. They're called Harry Potter. So Dumbledore 
has there has either the mentor is captured kidnapped there's a barrier something has to happen because you can't go run and hide behind this character anymore the main character has to look at themselves and go i have to step up and be the hero now if this is the karate kid mr miyagi can't step onto the mat if this is a biblical story god can't come down and save jesus all of these stories are very similar and the character types again are very similar these are story types that have been around since the beginning of time but they are really really successful in melodrama now what does this teach us the primary lessons that you get from this are these stories teach us how to be a human in the beginning there's you you have a good heart what you do you do hopefully for the right reasons or at least what you think are the right reasons at that time and if you're flawed if you've had things that have damaged you in the past does that mean that you're bad no it just means that you have a history that will help you later on in this journey now deep down you know you're special you do even if you don't want to admit it you know you're special but you don't know why and that's what your story is about now along this way along this journey you're going to take through life you're going to encounter villains and the scarier the villains the better because nobody cares about you defeating a villain that's easy villains are always terrifying and you're going to overcome many villains in your life but only you can overcome the villain because it's your villain but nothing ever gets done alone so you're going to have teachers who help you unlock those parts of yourself that you're going to need in order to defeat the villain and you're going to need friends you're going to need friends to help back you to walk you through this journey in life and that are going to help you defeat the villain now can you defeat the villain without friends no but can your friends defeat your villains for you no that's for their story your story you have to defeat the villains and that right there is why melodrama is so powerful you have melodrama today in everything you watch and melodramas always ended happy virtue is rewarded vice is punished good is rewarded evil is punished and that's what a happy ending is when you have a story that has a happy ending that's the good guys winning that's your heroes winning and that right there is a carryover from this melodrama so what your assignment is going to be is i want you to go out and watch a movie watch a tv show i know right ah, ah, ah i gotta go watch a tv show yes you get to go watch whatever show you want so when your parents or anyone you're with could be your spouse could be anyone is like hey what are you doing and you're like i gotta watch this show it's for homework it gets to be whatever you want so pick whatever show you want to watch and i want you to identify the five stock character types i want you to see who the hero is who the heroine is who the villain the sidekick and the mentor are i want you to write them down and i want you to tell me why you think that person in the show fits that character description so i know why you think that way upload that so i can read it and i will see you soon